Hello folks. You're catching us here in the midst of gassing up the red arrow. Now you might be tempted to indeed say, Damien, what the hell? The red arrow? Hasn't that been well over a year since you were working on this car and at that time it was in no fit state to actually charge or drive or do anything? Well, it's funny the way these things work out for me, folks, because the recent uh, successes that I've been having with the Model 3 drive unit uh, inverter logic board have given me a big push in order to get the Red Arrow under its own steam. Uh, not quite finished to the point we're going to be taking it on the road because there's going to be still a lot of bodywork and things like that to do. Uh, but it is going to be driving, we'll be able to drive it around the property here uh, and hopefully you'll be seeing that in the next fun packed episode. But we're currently charging at a nice sedate 6.6 .6 kilowatts here. Uh, so I thought I would give you folks a bit of a walk through on uh, where we're at and serve as a bit of a reminder because this car does um, represent quite a lot of firsts for me um, in things that we're going to have uh, available for testing uh, but before we do we do that just to finish my main point is i need to get this car driving because i have some new lights for the barn here uh, that were very kindly donated to me and in order to fit them up above me here i need to have a car out of here so i can get a bit of a scaffolding type of a thing or even a simple la ladder set up here and once we have that done then we need to drag the third aka our volvo v50 um in here because this is going to be our test mule then for the model 3 drive unit board so as I said, before we can do any of that, we need to get the Red Arrow driving. So let's have a look and see where things are. Despite my pleas with you to not support me, you crazy patrons have been at it again. And we have these four uh, 200 watt, I see them as um, solid state lasers, frickin' lasers, uh, to install in the barn here, uh, which as I said, when we have an E36 uh, here in the middle of the barn, makes it a little bit difficult uh, to reach the roof. Hopefully a quick, or at least as quick as I'm able to make these things, Red Arrow history recap. Um, I'd recommend you watch some of the recent videos from a year or maybe 18 months ago if you want a more detailed update. 1996 BMW E36 four door originally a 318 TDS. I purchased this a good while ago now as the main vehicle for my 1000 euro EV build challenge. And uh, since then it's been around the block a bit with some different owners. Came back to me two years ago and it is now equipped with the Lexus GS or IS 300H um, gearbox and inverter. Uh, as part of the rebuilding process, the rear subframe was taken out. Uh, I had to weld in new trailing arm pockets, treat a load of rust in there in the back. Uh, the rebuild subframe was then put back in and the car was uh, dragged back in here to the workshop uh, early last year. I did a bit of work on it, um, 
but it didn't get a lot of attention uh, last year. So beyond getting the battery box and uh, most of the power electronics in, I wasn't doing any of the wiring or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, so this vehicle is our first one with the 300H drive system. Uh, it's not the first in the world with it. I believe there's one in the UK. Um, it is also my first vehicle to utilize a 108S battery which is in this, the whole pack is up the front of the vehicle here. It's a 14 kilowatt hour pack from Jaguar Land Rover hybrid of some sort. Um, our charger is the Gen 2 MG 6.6 kilowatts uh, single phase with V2L capability. So this vehicle should indeed be capable of outputting uh, 230 volts, uh, 50 hertz single phase for us. Um, it also uses, uh, for the first time, I have not built a, um, I've not built a high voltage junction box. It uses the MG, I believe, ZS high voltage junction box that bolts directly on top of the charger. Uh, so that makes quite a neat uh, package. In terms of other firsts, uh, this car also has, you can just about see it over here, the Volvo uh, power steering pump, which is can control. So we'll be adding that feature to the Zombie Verter VCU. Um, other firsts, I don't have it fitted at the minute, but this car will have the MG PTC, which is a Lin driven um heater matrix so this car will have the mg uh, lin control ptc heater that'll be the first car that i'll have built that won't use a liquid uh, based heating system for the passenger compartment uh, so this is going to be our heater we'll be adding that uh, to the vcu project as well the car originally came with this kind of quasi-electronic throttle pedal. Uh, so it still had the mechanical pedal that you would have had with a cable-based system. But around, I guess, the 90s, they were beginning to mess around with electronic controls for diesel engines. So they have this kind of a pot box thing in there. Uh, not really suitable. You could use it. I thought ab about it. Uh, but the way that they work, they really only give you one usable throttle channel. So I bit the bullet, ripped out all this and replaced it uh, with an E46 dual Hall Effect pedal. So jobs that I still have to do. Uh, the driver's side door lock is completely shot. Uh, BMW wanted something like 700 euros for one. There would have been little point in me buying a second-hand one locally because being on the driver's side, they'll all be worn out. Uh, so what I did was I bought one uh, in, from an eBay seller in France from a left-hand drive car. So therefore, that would have been the passenger side. Uh, so we'll get that uh, fitted so we can actually close the door. And some of you may have already noticed that while I have the discs and the caliper brackets on here, we do not have the calipers or any of the brake lines. So I have to run a new front to rear brake line and new brake lines in the rear and fit new calipers and all that stuff. I do have all of that hardware, so hopefully in about a week's time, I'm going to be able to get the brakes on here, get the driver's door lock done, and at that point, then we're going to be able to put the wheels on and hopefully get the red arrow moving outwards. All right, so the DC-DC is working away on the charger as well with 14.2 volts on our 12 volt system. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, this is our first vehicle with a, um, a 108S pack. So I believe the fully charged voltage would be something like 440 volts. 
Now we're not going to be going up that high today. I only want to get a couple of kilowatt hours into the pack because uh, I don't have the BMS hooked up. So we'll just go up to like 50, 60 percent, something like that. Uh, just to give me enough juice to move the car around, hopefully next week. So, there you have it folks. It's strange the way the dice fall sometimes that something unrelated to this, the Model 3 drive unit project ends up giving uh, another project a much needed um, move along. So, uh, like I say, the plan is I have to break away from this now for the rest of this week. Uh, I've got to do some work on the property. But we're going to come back then and uh, we are going to get the brakes done in the, re the rear uh, driver's door lock fitted. And at that point then we can throw the garbage wheels that I have back on here and drive out. Uh, as you've seen there we are starting, turning wheels, all that stuff's working away fine. Um, so they're... Won't be a lot left then after that just for driving the car around here on the property. Now, before we can then go on the road, uh, we need to deal with the rust problems in the uh, sills. I've got new sills to fit. A um, little bit around the rear arches, one of them in particular will need to be cut out and replaced and I have a spare for that. Um, then we're going to need to sand the car down, paint it, and uh, let's face it folks, that's going to be a challenge for next year, Damien, because uh, this year, Damien now is going to have quite a lot of stuff to do. But there is one little bit of a silver lining uh, to a further delay on the project, and that is that the red arrow is if i can tilt forward and show you the number plate is a 1996 um re registered vehicle meaning next year 2026 it will be turning 30 years old and at that point will be eligible for classic tax at a rate of 56 euros a year which is less than half of what i'd be paying even for it as an ev now so uh, that's where we're at. Um, thank you very much, folks, for all the support, no um, matter what it may be. I know the projects take a long time. It's just pretty much just me here. Uh, but I certainly wouldn't be able to do it uh, without your kind help. So we will see you back uh, probably when I'm... Um, driving out of here hopefully in a week or 10 days and um, then we're going to be dragging the turd in here so that's going to be even more fun so as always don't forget to give this garbage a solid thumbs down uh, do not support me on patreon or paypal or any other way whatsoever especially don't donate parts to me and things like that that's a mistake because then i'm going to use them here and do more stupid projects like this with a MG charger. He wants that. Okay. So until then, happy brake line flaring.